We're no longer relying on the uh, uh, recording devices in the in the class here since the last several have failed. Uh, I am, but I am recording. I'm going to be doing so manually from now on. So hopefully, uh, it, uh, it's it's using my own microphone, so the audio might not be as good. And another drawback is that we're only going to have uh, two, uh, one uh, actual screen recorded here. Uh, so I'm going to have to mirror it on both sides here instead of having notes and, and code. Uh, maybe that's even maybe that's a little bit better. I don't know, but. Uh, hopefully it'll be a far more reliable going forward and these will still be available on VidGrid. They'll still be available on YouTube uh, and hopefully it'll be a little bit more reliable from now on. So we're starting on our next module, our next major topic, which is uh, SQL and databases. Uh, and to motivate that, I'm showing you what you've been basically working with up till now, which are flat files, CSV files or the data files that you've been using for your, uh, your project. Uh, they're flat files because the entire data model has been flattened out into one table that has a rows that correspond to records and columns that correspond to fields or uh, pieces of data for an individual. Now this one is uh, a, a student enrollment system. Uh, now I'm going to have to stay over here for the, for the mic from now on. Uh, but the, this is a student enrollment system that you've got courses, you've got the course name, You've got the students that are enrolled in there and their NUIDs and their emails. Uh, and of course, there are lots of problems with this data. Uh, you can see immediately some of the problems. What would those be? What's one problem with the data? The, they're what? Re repetition, right? The, for every, uh, every time that J student is enrolled in a course, we're repeating his last name and his first name, or sometimes, it's not consistent. Sometimes it's last name, comma, the first name, and then uh, or the, the first initial or the first name. Sometimes it's first name, last name. So inconsistency, repetition. Sometimes there's missing data, just like with your game database that you did for your first uh, assignment. Uh, some, of those, uh, some of those rows were just there to say that there is this publisher, even though they've not published any games. There is this student, Tom Waits, with this email, even though he's not enrolled in any uh, this course, uh, any particular course for with respect to this record, not only that, but sometimes missing data are are treated as uh, empty strings. Sometimes there's a flag stream like none. Sometimes it's properly done with a null value, right? Uh, so lots of inconsistencies, lots of failure points for what are called data anomalies, because if I went in and tried to update this and clean up this data. I would have to touch every single possible record. Uh, anytime that I changed, uh, say, John Student's uh, email, uh, I would, well, uh, the, the, uh, he's adding a brand new email. Do I change all of the old records so that it's at this new email, or do we need to maintain more than one record, right? So there are lots of problems with this. Uh, there's repetition of data, there are formatting issues. Uh, if it's a CSV file, then what do you do if your field has a comma in it? You have to escape it, right? Uh, and, and there's no, uh, and one program could come in and muck up the data and, and corrupt it, uh, and it would be lost forever uh, if there were formatting issues. There are consistency issues. There are what we call data integrity issues. Uh, that uh, John Student is uniquely identified by his NUID here, but elsewhere he's identified in uh, different ways with J Student or uh, student comma John, John student, right? A whole bunch of issues here. Not only that, but there are, it's not sorted. It's in one big giant file. So anytime that you wanted to uh, say, uh, do an operation, like uh, pull out John student's full student record for that semester, you would have to touch every single record. And while you're touching every single record to see, is this John student? No. Is this John student? Yes, include it. Right? That means you are putting a file lock on that, and no other program can come in and touch the data at the same time. In other words, everything becomes serial. There's no parallelization here at all. One person can use this piece, this data at once. And only when one person is, is done using that data can you release that file lock uh, for another process. Uh, imagine if Google worked like that, that only one person in the world could you make a Google search at any one time, right? Not a great solution here. Also, there's no security at all. If there's a file on the system, anybody who has permissions to read that file can do anything that they want to that file, read or write that file, right? 
Uh, in a real solution, a database management system, we have solved all these problems. It goes back all the way to Edgar Codd, uh, who later on we'll, we'll remember Edgar Codd because of uh, third normal form when we talk about that probably next week, maybe the week after. Uh, that uh, everything in a database must depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key, so help me Codd. Uh, that's Edgar Codd, the, the inventor of the relational model back in the 1970s. He did it at IBM, uh, and, uh, and, and today we've got dozens of different database management systems. Uh, the key aspect here is that data is stored in tables. Not just one table, but different tables. Sounds kind of like object-oriented programming, where you separate things out, single responsibility principle. That table over there is responsible for students. That table over there is responsible for courses. That table over there is responsible for bringing them together. That table over there is responsible for emails, right? Separating them out, that's called normalization. And uh, that's one of the key aspects. Data is stored in columns and rows. Just now you can, if you look at one single table, then you can look at it kind of like an Excel file, uh, where you've got the rows which correspond to, uh, to uh, records, and you've got columns uh, that correspond to the actual data. Right? Uh, records are stored as rows. Uh, each row ha may have, in fact, it should have a unique identifier. We call these primary keys or PKs for short. Right? Uh, rows in different tables are related to each other through what are called foreign keys. Uh, so what I want to do now is I want to just jump into it with basic CRUD, that is create, retrieve, update, and destroy. These are the four basic operations for any pieces of data. We need a way to create data, insert new records into our database. We need a way to retrieve data out of our database because if we can't pull stuff out of our database, then what's the use of storing it? Uh, and we need a way to update uh, data that already exists in the database. Maybe we misspelled John student's name, and we, need to, uh, uh, and we need to update that. Or we can destroy. In other words, we can delete records. That's basic CRUD. Create, retrieve, update, and destroy. We're going to go through all the basics here today with a very simple database that you've already worked with without really knowing it. Right? Here's a database. Uh, tell me, what, what do you think is stored in this database? Game data, right? Video game data. We've got three tables here. Uh, one of them is a game table, one of them is a platform table, one of them is the publisher table, and one of them is the availability table. Now let's look at this game table right here. By the way, this is called an ER diagram. It's an entity relation diagram. And you're going to be producing one for bonus for your, uh, uh, for your design document eventually. Uh, but it's another way of representing something through pictures. So uh, let's, let's understand what this, these pictures mean here first. Every game is uniquely identified with a game ID. Right? Uh, and you know that this is a primary key because of this little graphic right here. Uh, I, I'm not going to be able to zoom in on it uh, anymore here, but you can. it's a little key. right? Uh, and that's the primary key. It's also what kind of, what, what kind of uh, piece of data do you think this is? An integer. right? So everything in this database has exactly the same thing. That a publisher has a publisher ID. The platform has a platform ID. They're all integers and they're all primary keys, right? That's what this little graphic right here is. It's a way to uniquely identify every record in that table. Right? Now let's look at what else is in this table, in this game table. The name of the game. Var char stands for variable character, and 255 is a limit. So you can have a video game of a variable number of, of characters up to 255 characters, right? So give me a video game. Destiny 2. Destiny 2, okay. That's definitely less than 100 and, uh, 255 characters, so that would fit there. But if you had a really, really long name, like the awesome game that everybody loves and everybody wants to play, blah, 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 right? Then it's going to have data truncation because we've defined this column right here. This is a column. Uh, oh, it's called name, and it's uh, up to 255 characters. Let's come back to the publisher ID after we've looked at the publisher table. The publisher table, of course, has a primary key. That uniquely identifies every publisher in the database. Right? Uh, all, all of these are also automatically generated. I've, I've set up this database to automatically generate these so I don't have to worry about them. Key management is a very, very difficult uh, uh, task. 
it's solved by using a relational database management system. Uh, but you also have a publisher name here and also a varchar. Varchar again is variable character. In other words, a string. It's a string of up to 255 characters. Now, how are these two tables related here? This little, uh, this little chicken foot right here uh, is uh, a many relation. So there's a one to many relation over here. One publisher can publish one game or two games or three games or four games, many up, up to many games, including zero games. There could be a publisher record over here that they've not published any games, at least according to our database yet. That's perfectly fine. There is a one to many, and many also includes zero. There, from the perspective of the game table, there's a many to one relationship back to the publisher. The, there could, uh, the, this one game has one publisher uh, that's responsible for it. Now, in the real world, you could have multiple publishers on a game. We're not gonna, we're, that's not what this database is modeling here. Right? Over here in the platform, now uh, we've got the, the platform name like Xbox, uh, PC, uh, whatever, right? Uh, wh whatever your platform over here is. Uh, now, what is the relationship between a game and a platform? Well, first of all, what's the relationship between a game and a platform in the real world? One game can be published on several platforms, right? Destiny 2, is that PC only? PC, Xbox, PlayStation, is that it? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I, I don't know that many games. I only, I only play Splatoon 2. Uh, so... Uh, when we get uh, when we get to switch games, then I will go ahead and put in my own, but uh, not until then. All right. So, uh, what about the other way around? One game. Well, so one game can be published on many platforms. What about one platform? <laughs> would, would would you buy a PS4 or five when it comes out if there was only one game on it? Some people would. <laughs> it depends on the game. <laughs> Probably not. One platform can have multiple games on it. That's where this table comes in. It's a, there's a one-to-many relationship from the game table to the availability table, and a one-to-many relationship from the platform table to the availability table, meaning that there's a, between these two tables, there is a many-to-many -many relationship. Okay? Uh, that's, uh, that's all realized through these foreign keys here. All these green things, or uh, sorry, red things right here, uh, these red uh, diamonds, uh, those are foreign keys. That who, uh, who published this game? Well, the publisher with this publisher ID referring back up to this table, that's who published it. Uh, this game is available on what platform? You look in this availability table and you say that the game with ID 2 is published on platform with ID 5 and that, that connects a record in this table to this table over here. Okay. Now that we've got a little bit of an understanding of the setup of this, of this database, which you've already worked with on assignment one, you worked with a flattened version of this, a CSV uh, version of this thing. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to start setting you up here. First of all, as I posted on Piazza, uh, I'm going to recommend that you download MySQL Workbench. You can work with SQL in Eclipse if you really want to, in IntelliJ. There are about 50 of these things. Uh, there are 50 different IDEs out there uh, that you can work with SQL. I, I suggest MySQL simply because it is free. And the price is right. right? Uh, and it's also somewhat stable. MySQL Workbench, uh, go ahead and download it. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm going to start up my, SQL, my MySQL Workbench uh, over here. It's cross-platform too, so it's available on Windows, Mac, whatever. Right? Uh, and there. So once you've got MySQL Workbench, you can start working in SQL. To get access to your SQL environment, which you have, you can of course install your own server and do everything you yourself if you really want to. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, oops, uh, I don't remember what my password is. Uh, I think that's it. Okay, there you go. Uh, this was the uh, link that I gave you on Piazza. If you go to that, again, if you go to up to account, account settings, you can reset your MySQL password here. Uh, later on, you can change it. Uh, when you, if, if you do change it, uh, make sure that you are not using a password that you care about, that you use with other systems, because eventually it will appear in your, J, uh, in your uh, project code somewhere. And of course, you're sharing this with your partner if you've teamed up with somebody. 
Uh, so make sure that you are not using a password that you use on other systems. It is not going to be secure, okay? Now, once you've set that up, then you can go ahead and connect to your database by creating a new connection. So I'm, you can't see it on the, the recording screen, but if you go up to MySQL Workbench, uh, let's see, Databases, Database, Connect to Database, then something like this will pop up. You're going to connect not to the local host unless you've got your own server running on your own machine or something. You're going to connect to cse.unl.edu. Leave the port number, that's the standard SQL port number, MySQL port number. You are not root as much as I would like to be root. I'm not root. You're going to have to connect using your uh, login. Right? Now I've already done this and of course you can go ahead and save the connection. Uh, I've already done it over here. Uh, I've chosen not to save my password. Uh, I think that this is it. Just so that I have to retype it every single time. And now we're in my uh, we're in my database right now, right? Uh, now uh, ignore what I'm going to do. I should have done this before. Drop database. If you ever need to drop your entire database, you can. Your database is going to be your login. So of course you're not going to have access to my database. You're not going to have access to your partner's database unless you get their password or anybody else's database. But I'm going to go ahead and drop my database and start afresh here. If you do drop a database, you need to create the database recreate it there now I can look at all my tables so table well, actually so I, I destroyed what, whatever was in my database before I just destroyed it I recreated my database and now I need to use it right. your database again will have the same name as your login you can uh, if you were the administrator if you were the root you of course you could create any database with any name that you wanted but you are not the root you don't have that level of access the sysadmins have already created everybody's database for them and named it after their same login. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this. Use whatever database you want, followed by a semicolon. Looks familiar, right? And you see down here uh, that, uh, let me go ahead and put this up a little bit there. I'm not gonna be able to change the uh, size of this stuff down here, but green means good, right? And it says, okay, yeah, you're using uh, your database right now. If I was not, then it would say, well, you haven't uh, said which database you want to use yet, so you can't do anything yet, okay? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and look at what tables I have right now. And this is what it's going to look like when you get started. There are no tables. Show me my tables. Well, I haven't created any tables yet, okay? We'll get to table generation and creation later on when we talk about design. This is a well-designed database for the most part. Uh, but we're, we're, what I want to do is I want to start out by using this database. And for that, I'm going to direct you to the notes, which I've already uh, 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 committed today. Uh, the, not, the, not these notes, but I've committed the video game database SQL here. Right? Now, if you cut and paste this into my SQL workbench, you can go ahead and execute this and get the same database that I am describing right here, and you can work along. Right? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with the raw here. Copy. And then you can get rid you can get rid of uh, your results right here. It's just a tab down below. You can go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut and, uh, paste all of this in. And of course, you need to use your database. You need to replace that with that. I'm going to execute this entire script. Right. Excellent. Uh, now everything is in there, and I'll go ahead and get rid of all this. And now show me the tables that have been created. There's the availability table, the game table, the platform table, and the publisher table. Right? If you want to describe one of those tables, uh, game, describe the game table for me. Well, there's this game ID, there's the name, there's the publisher ID. Uh, the game ID is an integer, the publisher ID is an integer. The game ID is a primary key. Uh, the publisher ID is a foreign key, multiple key. This is a, uh, uh, this is a varchar, right? Uh, the name is a varchar. Okay. Now, how was I executing all these things? Well, if you want to execute one command, the current command that you're the uh, what, what, if I'm on line two right now. If I want to execute that one command, and unfortunately I'm on a Mac here, I haven't used Windows in a long time. It's Command Enter, right? Command uh, probably Shift or probably Control Enter if you're on Windows. That'll execute one command. If you want, and then of course, if you change it, uh, if you move down to a different line and you want to execute that one line, again, 
command enter or command return for uh, Mac. Probably, probably anybody on Windows following along right now. What is it? Uh, uh, control, control enter. You don't know? Uh, okay, I don't know what it is, uh, but it's. Uh, I think you can execute it up here. There's also a graphical way of doing it. Uh, uh, execute the selected portion of the script. So you can go ahead and like select multiple lo uh, lines here as well. And this is the button that you would hit. Otherwise, oops, I didn't want that. Don't explain it to me. Uh, this one will execute the entire thing. Yeah, execute the statement under the keyboard cursor, sorry. Uh, this one executes everything, okay. I don't know which one executes everything, but uh, the, uh, for uh, to execute the entire thing on a Mac, it's going to be Shift Command Enter, right? and it'll execute all of those. And you see that there are two results here. The first one, show me the tables. The second one, describe that game table for me. And you can go ahead and dismiss them one by one. All right. So again, it, if you, uh, I don't want to save it yet. Uh, if you go to uh, the notes, uh, the, I've already committed this, and you can see that it's even nicely marked up. You can go to the raw, copy, paste, and now you've got a copy of this database right here if you want to follow along. Okay. Now, we need to review CRUD. Right? Or not review CRUD, but we need to start covering CRUD. Uh, I'm going to go in this a little bit different order because retrieve, that's the big one. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with Create, update, and destroy, and then we'll talk about how to retrieve uh, in more detail later on here. Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start, uh, you know, taking notes over here in uh, my SQL Workbench. Eventually, I will cut and paste these over to the notes so that they're available in GitHub for you as well. Uh, but first of all, let's go ahead and uh, create a uh, or uh, create create some uh, game records. Dot, dot, dot. So, uh, nah, I still don't want it saved. So how should I go about creating some, or, uh, uh, yeah, create some, uh, some game records? Basically, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to insert some records into this game database. Now, before I insert Destiny 2 or whatever game we want to, in, uh, to input here, do I need a publisher or not? Look at this table. What am I going to have to enter? The game ID, that's a primary key that's taken care of for me. I don't need to worry about that. I'll, of course, need to supply the name. And what else? Do I need to supply anything else? A publisher ID. What does that tell you about this relationship here? This is a parent. This is a child. Kind of like uh, classes, right? Can a parent exist without the child? Yeah. So a publisher can exist without a game. That makes sense because you have a publisher, no no games are published. But can a game exist without a publisher? Can a child exist without a parent? No. So what we're going to have to do first, if we want to create some records, is create some publisher records. So to do so, to do so, we need to first create some publisher records. Right. So Destiny 2, what was it uh, published by? Okay, Activision. Should I just go ahead and willy-nilly insert a new Activision record? What if it already exists? Okay, so I'm going to give you a little re uh, little preview here. Select everything from the publisher table. Right. That's how you can, uh, oh, sorry, from publisher, there we go. So, do you see Activision here yet? And of course, uh, in your IDE, you've got all, all, all these things where you can Go ahead and click on the uh, the tab up here, and it sorts them automatically for you. Uh, do you see uh, do you, what Activision you said? I don't see Activision here. So we need to first insert that record. Here's the syntax for doing it. Insert into the publisher table name, uh, and that's all I need, right? I just need a name because the publisher ID over here is automatically generated for me. And values, or value since there's only one record, but I usually go values in case that there are multiple records. And Activision, Is that how you, I assume that that's how you uh, spell it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this statement. This inserts a brand new record into the publisher table. If I selected them all out again and sort them, I can see that Activision is in there. What's its publisher ID? 14. It was automatically created for me. And if you look at this, 
it, it, there's no coincidence that oops, uh, come on I wanted you to sort them okay it's not sorting them I, I don't know why it's not sorting them let me go ahead and execute this again and resort it come on oh sorry if I uh, what I just did is I inserted it again what's gonna happen oopsie what do I have now two Activision records okay we'll take care of that later on but if I didn't want that, if that's bad data to have two publishers with the same name, I should have designed my database to disallow that by only allowing unique uh, values for the, for the publisher name in here. Okay, there was a question? Yeah. Okay, good question. Uh, give me another publisher. R Rum software? From, FR? Software, all right, and I, uh, fr uh, from or from? from? Okay, and there's one tuple. Here's another tuple. Give me another one. Mojang, like that. Are they good or bad? Okay. There. Uh, values. Darn it. I think I, um, that should have been how it's done. Maybe it doesn't like it because there's only one. There we go. Nope. I'll get back to you on that. I don't know what's wrong. Column doesn't match the value at row and one. Uh, it should be like this. Values, this, and then this, and then this. Did I not get a, uh, that, that, that looks good to me. I don't know why it's not doing it. I'll get back to you on that. Uh, but there, yeah, th they're not in there yet. So let me roll it back here to, what was the original one? Activision, All right. there we go. All right. But you can insert multiple records at the same time. Right? So this inserts a brand new record into the publisher with the name uh, and with that one value. Uh, of course, you could always cut, paste, and do it again. As you said, Mojang, there we go, there. And of course, you can execute that and select it again, and there they all are. Activision, Activision, too many Activisions, and Mojang right there. All right, now let's go ahead and insert a game record. So what did, uh, what did Activision publish? Destiny 2, okay. Insert into game the name and the publisher ID, values, and now why, why, why the name and the publisher ID? I need those two things. Remember that the primary key, that's automatically generated for me. Right? Uh, and I'm pretty sure that Destiny 2 is not in there, but of course we could double check, select everything from the game table. And yeah, these are just old games. Right? So there's no Destiny here at all. Destiny, 2, If there was a Destiny, there's definitely not a Destiny 2. Destiny 2, like that. All right. But what about the publisher ID here? I could get it somehow. I did it before though, didn't I? I looked at it and, oh, the publisher ID 14. Okay, I could go ahead and hard code it like this. Right. So you can hard code uh, key values. Right. In fact, you could even do this with a game. Game ID, name, publisher ID. You don't have to let it create, uh, create them for you. I'll go ahead and go with 102, not destiny two though. Uh, give me some, uh, give me something that uh, you said Minecraft, right? Minecraft and Mojang was 16. Uh, was, was it 16? Mm -hmm. Now I've got two records because I screwed up 16. Okay. Uh, Minecraft and published by publisher 16, right? You can go ahead and do that and it'll work. And if you select out the game now, you can see that Minecraft is there with this custom number. Uh, but again, key management is a very difficult, different, difficult thing. What if there was already a game in there with the ID of 102? Then my insert would fail. RDBMSs have this problem solved by generating these keys for you. Let it do its job. Right? So this doesn't seem all that satisfying right here. Right? Uh, insert into the game the values Destiny 2 uh, with 14 because I'm hard coding that 14 value. You may instead want to use um, a nested, 
queries. And by the way, before I uh, go on and, and continue this, uh, how, uh, how am I writing my notes here? With a hyphen, hyphen, and a space. What does that tell you? What, what is this line on line 15? It's a comment. That's how you comment in SQL. Uh, some, uh, some SQL implementations would allow you to use a hash. Some of them allow multi-line comments, multi-line comments, right? just like C. Uh, but the only thing that all of them allow is the hyphen hyphen space. That, that's cross-platform for any database management system. SQL Server, SQL, MariaDB, Postgres, uh, IBM has DB2 and Informix, et cetera. Um, the bigger one is Oracle Database, Oracle DB, et cetera. They're all going to have comments of this form, or at least support comments of this form. You also may, again, you may want to use a nested uh, queries instead. Insert into game, name, publisher, ID, values. Now, destiny2, that's going to be destiny2. Now, instead of hard coding that 14 value, I'm going to go ahead and create a subquery here. Select publisher ID from publisher where name is equal to Activision. There we go. And by the way, double quotes, single quotes are interchangeable. I'm going to go ahead and go with double quotes here. Okay. Let me go ahead and execute this now. Oops. Uh, Subquery return. Uh, oh, there. Good. Uh, already I've gotten myself into trouble here. You can't see this down here uh, unless you squint really hard, but it says this subquery, this select right here, getting the publisher ID of the publisher Activision, it's actually returning two results. Why was that? Because we inserted two records. So fast forward to fix this. Uh, oops. We have two publishers named Activision. Remove one of them. Right. So I'm going to jump ahead to the D of CRUD, uh, which is destroy. Delete from publisher. Ooh, what if I stop there? What's that going to do? It's going to delete all the records. <laughs> uh, it's going to delete LucasArts. It's going to delete Nintendo. It's going to delete all of them, right? I don't want to do that. I want to delete this one duplicate record right here. So I should narrow my scope down to only publisher ID. But before I do that, let's go ahead and try. Right. And it didn't let me. It saved me from myself. If you can't read that down there, it says you are in safe update mode and you tried to update a table without a where clause. Meaning that it knew you were about to destroy every single record in that entire table. I'm not gonna let you do that unless you go into unsafe mode. And, uh, and that means that you'd have to uh, put in another command here to, uh, to go into unsafe mode and then I know what I'm doing or I, at least I claim I know what I'm doing. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead. I do want all the publishers deleted for some reason, right? Uh, but it's not gonna let me do this by default because I'm in safe mode. Thankfully, it saved me from myself. So I'm going to put in a where clause where the publisher ID was and what was the uh, duplicate one? 15, all right? Once I do that, then it is happy with getting rid of that one record. If I look at all the publishers again, there we go, that duplicate record is now gone. 15 is now gone. So if I go back to my other insert uh, statement with the, uh, with the nested query here, that, and now it actually worked, right? Green means good right? down there. And if I look and see uh, what, what the, what, what's in that game table now, you can see that Destiny 2 is there with an auto-generated key, 103, and the uh, publisher is 14. Uh, let's go ahead and take care of that duplicate other publisher, Mojang. Right? Come on. Uh, the seven, uh, 17, so let's go ahead and get rid of that one too. Let's go ahead and get rid of 17. There. What if I tried that twice? What do you think? Deleting something that's already, that doesn't exist. Probably an error. All right, let's find out. Oh, okay. Uh, there we go. 
not an error. Green means okay. It just gives me how many rows did you actually end up deleting? Zero, right? So it's fine with not uh, doing nothing, right? Uh, but if you try to do something unsafe, like delete every single publisher, then it's not going to let you do that, okay? All right, we've inserted a couple of records here. Uh, what about the U, right? That was the C, right? Uh, let's go ahead, you can hard code values. So create some records, C equals create. What about the other crud? Retrieve, we're going to save that for last. Retrieve update. U is equal to update. Right? Uh, you, you can update a current record using the update keyword. For example, update. Um, I don't know. Destiny 2, is it actually a 2 or is it TWO or? Okay. Roman? Okay. I'm going to change it to Roman. Uh, Ro Roman numeral to II. Uh, let's go ahead and update game. All right. Set the name equal to Destiny 2 because it's cooler that way. Right. Destiny 2. Now, should I be able to, sh should I go ahead and execute that as is? Update the entire game table and set all of the game records names to Destiny II. Do you think it's going to let me? Hopefully not. Better not. Right? Nope. Safe mode. You're using safe update mode. You cannot do that. You cannot blank uh, uh, apply a rule to every single record in the database unless you actually mean it, in which case you need to shut off safe mode and then try it. Right? So I only want to change it of that one record where game ID is equal to, and what was the game ID of that? I'm going to have to look at it again. Destiny 2, the game ID was 103. 103. How could I have gotten away without hard coding that? I could go update game, set name equal to Destiny 2, where name is equal to Destiny 2. I'll, I'll be consistent about it and use double quotes here. There we go. All right. And I think that this will work. Maybe safe mode won't let me do this either. Okay. Nope. Safe mode won't let me do this. It needs to be on a primary key. Where game ID, what was the game ID again? Uh, 103. All right. So I can, uh, I could select, select the game ID by the uh, the name from game where name equals destiny and then the original was two there we go and there okay yeah go ahead uh, it's it's a stylistic choice so he was asked why do I indent uh, it, stylistically, uh, a lot of people will uh, if, it will break up a, a very long SQL query uh, into multiple lines because you don't want really long lines. Where do you break it up? Well, in this case, uh, a subquery happens to be the the natural place of where to break it up. Right? Um, there are style guides out there for SQL. Uh, they're a lot looser than say like Java or uh, programming languages, though. Simply because a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, different database vendors have different uh, of different uh, uh, dialects of SQL. Uh, I'm not going to show you any of those dialects. I'm going to show you universal SQL that will work on any system. Uh, Postgres, MySQL, SQL Server. There are certain things that uh, that only SQL Server supports and and nobody else supports them. There are certain things that Postgres supports and MySQL doesn't, et cetera. I'm only going to show you the universal stuff. So let's actually talk a little bit about style here. So again, comments start with a hyphen, hyphen, and a space. All um, uh, uh, keywords are lower cased. So, for example, uh, now uh, you had a question before, though. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, 
Semicolon, exactly. Yeah. And actually, that, that's not a universal either. You can re redo it so that it's a different delimiter. But se semicolon is good enough. Right? It's familiar. We all understand it. Right? Now, you will see some people, and especially uh, old school people, doing something like this. Update, update, game, or game, set name equal to destiny2. Right? And of course, that's... That's valid syntax as well. Keywords are, uh, keywords, uh, let me rephrase this. Keywords are case insensitive, right? Old school style is use all upper case, right? More modern style, which I'm, uh, which I'm using obviously, is going to be all lower case. Now, why, did, why is the old style all uppercase? Think back to 1970 where you didn't have color monitors, right? And you needed to offset reserved words, keywords, with your actual table words. Well, the only way to do it when everything was monochromatic, everything was green screen, was to make it all caps and then lowercase or camel case. All caps, lowercase, all caps, lowercase. We no longer live in that green screen world. There's no reason to do all uppercase and kill yourself uh, with the shift key the entire time, making your pinky fall off, when we've got nice IDEs like this that will ha syntax highlight everything. All the keywords here are in bold and blue. All of the table names and column names are going to be in black. All of the strings are going to be in this gold color, I think, uh, whatever you want to call that, right? So there's no reason to use the old school uppercase anymore. Just use the, uh, the lower camel case and save your pinky from having to just mash that uh, shift key the entire time. Right? Uh, so old style, nah, forget about it. Right? Uh, other styles are uh, you can align things. You can align and go to the next line as necessary to avoid long lines like this one. Don't do long lines like this, right? Why? Because it, it, it's, not read, it's not readable if you have to keep going back and forth just to read stuff, okay? So a little bit on the style there, okay? All right, uh, that was create, update, and of course you can update multiple records if you really want to. Uh, shut off safe mode and update them all. Uh, but uh, that's create, re, uh, update, Destroy. Well, we've already covered that, right? D equals destroy. Uh, to remove delete records, use the delete keyword. Right. And again, you're not going to be able to do it with all the records. Delete from game, right? I'm not going to. It's not going to allow me to do that because of safe mode. But I can do delete from game where game ID is equal to. I don't know which game do you want to delete. Do you want to delete that one? Is it not very good? No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Some critics there. Uh, 103. All right. We'll go ahead and get rid of it. All that hard work, and now we're just going to get rid of it. And goodbye. One row affected. Zero rows affected. You can do it as many times as you want. So that's why I covered those three first, because they're all pretty straightforward. They only have one way of doing stuff. All right? Uh, create, insert. Uh, update, update, and destroy, delete. Okay. What about the R retrieve? Yeah, that's how you spell it. Uh, to uh, retrieve records in a database, you use the select uh, uh, keyword. Right. So let's go ahead and retrieve retrieve all game records. Uh, so select star game and you can retrieve all publisher records. Right. Select star, oh sorry, from. Select star from, from publisher. There we go. And you can select multiple things and, and uh, do them all at once. Uh, here's the game. There are 25 records in there. Uh, GTA 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, a bunch of old school Nintendo games, Minecraft, we, it's still in there. 
and there's all my publisher records, okay? Uh, those are completely separate uh, 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 queries. These are all queries. These are select queries. Uh, you can call update queries as well. These are all queries to a database, questions to a database. Even though some of them are not interrogatives, m most of them are commands to the database, right? Uh, select from pub uh, star from publisher. The star keyword, uh, the star operator, selects every column from the table. If you only want a uh, subset of columns, you can be explicit. So for example, the game, I don't care about the uh, game ID, right? When I did this before, I got all three of those columns, the game ID, the name, and the publisher ID. What if I only wanted the name? I, I didn't want those other two. I could say select the name from game. And when I do that, I only get that one single column. If you want multiple columns and all named columns, you can go ahead and do publisher ID, right? Comma delimited. And when you do that, then you get both of those. The star is just a convenience thing when you're operating in an IDE like this. Give me everything. Star is, is called the wild card. Give me everything because it will wild card in you know, games. Uh, a wild card can match anything. So if it matches anything, give me anything, give me everything basically, okay? But if you only want a small subset, then of course you can do this. Sometimes it's also uh, helpful to rearrange and rename or alias your columns. All right. So select name as game title. This as is going to rename the, uh, the, the column, but only for the purposes of my, uh, the, the, uh, the result table, right? There's a special name for that. I forget what it is off the top of my head. Uh, a, a manifest table, I think. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a real table. Uh, the table is actually stored in the database. Uh, when you pull, and it has all three of those columns, but if you pull out a, a, a bunch of uh, records, then it's put in this special type of table that doesn't exist in the database, it just exists in memory. It's called a manifest table. Uh, so select the name as game title, and what else do we want? Publisher ID as pub ID, or publisher. Pub ID, All right, that's good enough, from game. Right. Now this is getting kind of long, so I'm going to go ahead and break this off like this. And then I'll, then I'll, uh, you can indent and, and align things all you want, right? So again, a style thing. This, do, this doesn't look like it's a monotype font, so it's not going to line up. Uh, but if you had a monotype font, then you could line it up perfectly and, uh, and even uh, go to the next line with from game. Uh, and there, now it's on three different lines. When I, when I execute that, it's difficult to see, but you can see up here that the, uh, the, 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 the actual column name has now been changed to game title instead of pub ID. Yeah? The actual publisher name? That'd be great, right? But that would mean that I'd have this table and the publisher, or the, or the publisher ID is over here in this table. So I've got this table and this table. I would need to mash them together somehow. I would need to, what do you think this is called? Joining them together. I would need to join them, and we'll talk about that eventually, right? So you can alias stuff. Let's see, what else do we want? Uh, alias, alias. Uh, you can also limit. So you can, you can use, or can use basic um, logic operators using uh, a where clause. Pause. Right. So select, uh, and now I'll go back to the uh, star here just for convenience. From game, where I, uh, game ID is say greater than five. Right. Now if you looked at all of them, and looked at all of these game IDs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to 20, and then we started at 102, that, that's because I inserted a record manually 
with 101 or 102 or something. I guess maybe it was this one. And then I uh, the, the, then the next record will uh, it'll automatically assign the next available ID. Again, key management. That's something the database handles. Let it do its job. But if I only want the games with an ID of greater than five, then I can do that by simply putting in a where clause. Select from game, select everything from game where the game ID is greater than five. When I do that, then I don't get those first five games. I only get everything after that. What if I want to cut it off at the other end? And game ID is less than 10. Right? So you can do this but with, an, with the explicit and keyword. And again, it's going to be case insensitive, but we're going with lowercase on all of our stuff. So when I execute this, then I only get those four games, six, seven, eight, and nine, okay? You can string all of those together if you want, or game ID is equal to, uh, I don't know, one. Right? So an or clause, what, uh, what about equality? <laughs> What do you see different here? It's not equals equals. Right? In SQL, there's only one equal sign. And of course, you can go ahead and combine them uh, less than or greater, or less than or equal to 10, or game ID is equal to one. And now I'm going to get that one, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, because now it matches it on the other end. You can have numerical comparison operators. You can also use string comparison comparisons. Select star from game where name is equal to, what was it, de destiny? What was it, two? Is that what we did in, in the end? Or we deleted it, didn't we? All right. Mine, Minecraft. There we go. And I only get that back, that one. Okay. Uh, and string comparisons here are just simply one equals operator. Yeah. Uh, good question. It depends on how you set up the database. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Uh -huh. I, oh, that's executing everything, sorry. The, just this one thing. There. It is case sensitive, but that's only because that's how I set up the database. Uh, I, the, I think the default now on CSE uh, is case sensitive. Uh, for many, many years, it used to be the old MySQL default, which was case insensitive. Uh, but then also, you, you get into other issues like, what if you store CJK fonts in there, so Chinese, Japanese, Korean fonts? What if you store Unicode in there? Then, it, then there are lots of things. It's called a character set. So it, it all depends on how you set up the database's defaults, how you set up uh, the table's defaults when you created the table, how you uh, how you are actually searching? So you can uh, you can start up a session uh, with case insensitive or, or not sensitive, right? Uh, and so there there are like four or five different factors there on what is case sensitive and what's not. Thankfully, I think that we've got some sensible defaults here, and it's going to be case sensitive. Although it's not going to support UTF. So if you are using those crazy fonts or whatever in your test cases, you might want to rethink that already. Uh, many of you are uh, encountered that. When you tried to put like umlauts and diacritics and stuff, or like some Norwegian stuff where it's a you know a, a, an O with a uh, with a slash through it or something like that, uh, some town in uh, Sweden or something, right? Uh, might want to stay away from that, right? Okay. So it is case sensitive. Default seems to be case sensitive. Right? So there's no such thing as Minecraft, but there's certainly such thing as Minecraft, right? Uh, and of course, you can also do, you can also do fuzzy. Uh, by the way, it's not, it's failing here. Why? Because I forgot the space. You do need that space there, right? Uh, you, uh, for MySQL. Uh, you can also do fuzzy uh, string comparisons, right? So select everything from game where name, I want it starting with G, capital G because I want all those GTA games. Uh, so uh, I could do something like this. Oh, how do I, uh, you know, whatever, right? G, capital G, and then it follows whatever. Now, normally, that would be a star, right? 
uh, because a star is a wild card in most, in most cases. But we've already used the star as a wild card for our uh, columns over here. So SQL has set aside another wild card for strings, the percent sign. Now, it's not going to return those because I'm using a strict comparison right here. Anything that is G and then a uh, percent sign, right? So if there was a game called G percent, then I would get that back. Uh, but I need to use the like clause instead. And when I do that, I get back those three, G, uh, four GTA games, right? Like, and then in conjunction with a wild card here, will give me anything that starts with a capital G. You can use as many of them as you want. For example, I want uh, anything with a uh, cra, cra in, the, uh, in the middle, right? Anything that uh, begins with anything, has somewhere in it a CRA, and then ends with anything. I don't know if we're going to get anything more than just Minecraft, though. So let's go ahead and, and uh, I don't know, anything, any game that has a lowercase c in it. There we go. Katamari Damacy and uh, Minecraft. There we go. Uh, let's go with a more common one. I don't know, R? What do we get out of that? Oh, we get a lot of them. All right, so you can use as many as you want. An R followed by anything, followed by a, I don't know, another R, right? Followed by anything. So this one would give you any game t uh, whose title has at least two R's in it. There we go. Super Mario Brothers, uh, Super Mario, uh, what's this? What's the difference there? Brothers, Super Mario Land, and then Lego Star Wars, right? And so I'm getting all those as a result. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Um, so, something like that. Okay, so GT and then like that. Capital G? Okay, well, I don't think that there are going to be any caps in there. But that will, uh, this will, uh, uh, this will get a result in any game that ends with a lower case G. And I don't know if there are any, no. So is that, does that answer your question? Okay, but you can put as many wild cards in there as you want. Uh, you, of course you can escape them. I think that, I don't, I don't have any games in there with a percent sign in them, but I think that you can escape it just by doing this. Uh, uh, percent, anything with an R in it. Yeah, and then the, the, that's not going to result in anything because no game title has a percent in it. All right, All right. good. Uh, let's see, that's loose string comparisons. All right, any questions so far? No? All right, then I want to go back to your question before. <coughs> I've got a game table, I've got a publisher table. What I actually want is a report be, to be generated with all the names of the games along with all the name, names of their publishers. If I just did a straight up uh, uh, query, select star from uh, game, right, then I'm going to get these meaningless uh, foreign keys. Right? Six, what publisher is that? Uh, Ten, what publisher is that? I have no idea. So what I need to do is I need to go from the game table and I need to take the publisher table and I need to join them together into one big table. Now what's the relationship between these two tables? The publisher ID is the one that's common to them. The publisher ID is in the child game table. It refers back to its parent. So if we start at the game table, we can do a join to the publisher table. And that's what I'm going to do here. Here's the syntax for doing it. They're called joins. You can combine one or more tables using the join keyword. So select from game, join publisher on, and sorry, join on. Now, how do you join them? What do they have in common? That foreign key, the publisher ID over here references the publisher ID over here. So they have to match, right? In fact, if I don't have this on, let me go ahead and run it, right? So was GTA 4 published by LucasArts? 
and Sony and Square Enix and Sega? No. Wow. Lots of publishers publishing the same game. What did I just do there? I did a blind join, which is also called an inner join. So I don't know if you've gotten to it in 235 yet. No, that's discrete mathematics if you're taking it. But if you have a set and you do a, uh, a cross join or, or a cross product or something like that, if you've got a set ABC over here and one, two, three over here, a blind join means that you are simply taking each element over here and matching it up to every single element over here. So you'd have ABC, one, two, three. You'd have A, one, two, three. B, one, two, three. C, one, two, three. And you'd end up with a total of three times three, nine records total. Uh, remember, how, how many records did we have in the public, the game table? Looks like uh, 50, you know, uh, how many? Uh, 21, okay. And how many records did we have in the publisher table? 21. So if I did that blind join, how many would you expect back? 21 times 21 is? Oh, for what? For, for what? 441? Okay. Let's check your math. Not that I don't trust you. Here's how you can count things. We'll talk about that later. Oh, three, 399. Hmm. That's not even a... Yeah, that's that, that sounds primed. Oh, no. We must have miscounted. All right. Here, let's get the count right. Select count star from game. 21, select count star from publisher, 19, there we go. What's 19 to, uh, times 20? Don't tell me. I'm going to let SQL do it for me. Uh, I might need to name these, but you can do basic math. Uh, I'm just doing this to show you that you can do basic math. Uh, as, uh, oh, you can't do that. Uh, uh, as who as bar you should be able to do this. No, okay, you can't do this. All right, now tell me what 19 times 21 is. 399. All right, great. So I wasn't lying. All right, but that's just a uh, uh, that's uh, that's a full inner join where every element over here is matched with every element over here. But it doesn't make any sense to do that when. That relation is not there. Not every game was uh, published by every publisher. Not every publisher published every game. So what I want to do is I want to put an on clause here. On publisher uh, on game dot publisher ID is equal to publisher dot publisher ID. Right? Only records where the publisher ID matches this one and this one matches will be returned. So GTA 1, 2, 3, and 4, they were all made by Rockstar Games. Right? Uh, Minecraft was made by Mojang, and uh, Minecraft is not seen anywhere else on here because it only has one publisher. Several games have the same publisher because of that one-to-many relationship. Right? One game was published by one publisher, but one publisher can publish many games. Right? Uh, and only by putting in the, the on clause do I actually get what, uh, what the database was designed for. But of course, you can put any crazy stuff in there that you want, including a full join, getting uh, uh, an uh, n times m number of records back, right? which now think about you've got a database with a moderately large database, <laughs> one million records over here, one million records over here. Should you be doing a blind inner join there? Probably not. I mean, you're going to be waiting on it for several days, right? literally several, several days, depending on the database. Right? Uh, so that seemed really long, right? Uh, here's how you can shorten it up. You can shorten up uh, uh, a long query using uh, or by aliasing the tables names as well. So select everything from game. I'm going to give it an alias as G. In fact, this is so common you can omit the keyword as. And G is going to be the shortened version of this. From G, join publisher P on G dot publisher ID is equal to P dot publisher ID. There, and I get the same result as before. Uh, it's shortened up over here, G, P, etc. Now, I want you to look at the columns here. 
game ID, name, publisher ID, publisher ID, name. So what do you immediately see is a problem? Repeated columns, so why do we need both publisher IDs? I just wanted to report with the game name and the uh, publisher name. So I'm going to eliminate both of those off the bat. I'm also going to go ahead and eliminate the game ID because I don't really care about that. I just want a, uh, the name of the game. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I want select g.name and p.name from game, and I get just those two columns. But there's still a problem. Name, name. Which one is which? Right, now, you might know these games, so you know off the bat that these are the games over here and these are the publishers over here. Uh, but if it's not a familiar data, then how are you going to disambiguate those? Let's give them better names. Let's give them aliases as game title, p.name, as publisher name, from game g, blah, blah, blah. And now I've changed the names of these columns, and it's way more convenient now, especially programmatically. Eventually, you're not going to be doing manual queries like this. You're going to be writing Java code that formulates queries, executes them on a database, receives a result set back, and then crunches them in, in, in code. If you get back two columns one of the, with the same name, and you have code that give me the name, right? give me the value of the name, then you have two columns like that. Which one is it going to give you? So by disam you can disambiguate it by providing uh, aliases here instead. Right. Well, why stop there? Where else could we join? That was just the games and the publishers. What about the platforms that they're available on? How am I going to have to join on that? So how many, how many tables do I have now? Start at the game table. Join to the availability table, then I can join to the platform table. Can I immediately go from the game table to the platform table? No, what's the, what's the relationship? There, there's no direct relationship between those two tables. I have to go through that intermediary table. By the way, that table has a name, or that, uh, that type of table has a name. What do you think it's called? It's called a join table, right? It joins two other tables together with two foreign keys. How would that look? So get all the data with multiple joins. I'll go ahead and select everything from, where should I start? I'll start at game, G, join publisher P on, and I'll just cut and paste this. And I'm going to go down to the next line here. And you can join again. Join uh, availability. A on A dot, how, how do those two match again? How do I match from this availability table over here to the game table? The game ID and the game ID. Right? A dot game ID is equal to uh, G dot game ID. Right? Join all the way over to the platform table on P dot platform ID is equal to A dot platform ID. And immediately I'm going to have a problem here. I've been overzealous on my aliases, haven't I? How many, how many aliases uh, do I have? G, P, A, and P. Can I have two aliases with the same name? Probably not. Let's go ahead and run it. Nope. Error not unique tables or alias P. All right. P has already been used, so I'll go with pub instead. Pub. And when I do that, I get everything. Lego Star Wars, published by LucasArts. Available in, in 2005, available on Xbox. Uh, where are those GTA games? Let's go ahead and sort this. Oh, I only get two GTA records. Why is that? They were both published, by, GTA 4 was published by Rockstar Games. It's available on Xbox 360 and PC. But wait a second, I thought that we had four GTA games there. Where are, the other where are the other three? Let's take a look at this table again. Can a game exist without a publisher? No. Can a publisher exist without a game? Yeah. What about a platform? Can a platform exist without a game? Yeah. 
Can a game exist without a platform? Yeah. Right. So what does that tell you about those GTA 1? It has a publisher, definitely, because it can't exist without a publisher. And we were, that's why we were getting it before. But does it have to be available on a platform with respect to this database design? No. So we must not have a record in there to join them together. Consequently, we do not get them in our report. What about, what if we did want them? What if we did want those kinds of joins? What we would do is a left join, left join, and a left join. And we'll talk more about this on Tuesday next week. And now I'm getting all those GTA games. GTA 1, 2, and 3 are now there. They definitely have a publisher because Rockstar Games, you can't exist without a publisher. But what about their availability on any system? They're all nulls, right? So the difference between a join and a left join is that you preserve the records. And by the way, I'm going left join here. There are right joins in case you're wondering. But I read, I don't know about you, but I read left to right. So I always like to start with table, left join, left join, left join, because I'm reading left to right. If you started with table and you did a right join, then you're reading right to left. Uh, so you can do it and you can use right joins. I, don't, I, I tend to stay away from them because that's not how you read code. You read code left to right, and so I'm going to be always using a left join. There are some situations in which you need to use a right join, and we might get to those later on. But a left join will preserve records. Okay, Left joins preserve records for which there is no match. All right. And I will not save this, but I will go ahead and cut and paste it and make sure that you've got it in your notes here. Any questions? There. Uh, there's the preview. It, everything we did today will be pushed out to GitHub later on. All right. Hopefully that 